Emergent Consciousness, Tier Zero, Precursors to Memory. Before we can even get to understanding the finer complexities of what we call human consciousness and or behaviors, we must first understand the origins as well as some of the physical factors of our universe that make this experience possible. First off, I take issues with our current definition of memory. My additional definition of memory, from a universal standpoint, as the form of conglomerates of what we call matter and energy, as a reflection of all of the cause and effect that has ever occurred, and therefore the most basic form of memory in the universe. For example, we perceive that likely we had a big bang or a discharge of what we call energy that set our universe in motion. Perhaps those two ideas are just theories, but they're really reasonable ones, and we do know that galaxies are moving. Additionally, we know that galaxies are moving further away from each other. I also have theories about astrophysics and a great many other things, but I'll get into that in future videos also. But I just want to touch on a couple of these facts so that you folks aren't totally lost in my train of thoughts. And in case you just weren't aware of some of this. Can't know everything. All of this cause and effect perpetuated the formation of extremely dense objects we refer to as black holes. We're relatively certain that the black holes are responsible for the formation of stars, and the stars are responsible for the formation of many elements. Structural geometry, if you will. These elements and chemicals are the product of all of the cause and effect in the universe, chaos, combined with the laws of emergence. Without this law of emergence producing these chemicals and elements, we don't have the necessary items to produce our complex memory and or complex biological consciousness. Hydrogen and oxygen are the product of stars. Another emergent phenomena is the bonding of hydrogen and oxygen becoming water. Without water, a lot of other chemicals, amino and other building blocks of life wouldn't be able to form because water slows things down enough so that they can interact. It basically adds more sides to the dice that the universe is rolling. There's also many heavy elements that we believe are formed within the environments, the inner workings of stars, and when the star explodes, space is littered with those heavy elements, such as iron. A little bit about water, it's been proposed that the way water molecules join together is a reflection of memory because, in a way, it reflects the physical cause and effect that the molecules have been exposed to. I recommend you check out a movie called The Great Mystery of the Water, or I've seen it titled as just Water also. You should be able to find it on YouTube. Additionally, I recommend ignoring all the spiritual nonsense within that documentary, as well as opinions and pseudoscience. Just focus on actual science and the physical cause and effect. Perhaps I will do a reviewing of certain documentaries in the future also. Help everybody weed through the bullshit in order to identify what is tangibly applicable to our understanding and critical thinking models. So back to tier zero awareness, or the precursor of memory. All of the things I've been talking about in relation to the universe and these emergent properties that yield the structural geometry, chemicals, and heavy elements that are what all forms of life are made of, which allows the formation of our memory. In actuality, our ability to remember is just a complex recording of the cause and effect in the universe itself. Cause and effect and chaos is a driving force of emergent properties, which allows for the expressions. One of the resulting structural formations birthed from these processes is what we call ferrous oxide 3, or magnetite, aka lodestone. This crystal is the most magnetic of all naturally occurring substances on Earth. Combining our knowledge of chemistry, physics, and geology, scientists are able to ascertain the state of Earth's magnetic field at certain times in history. I don't want to call this the planet's memory, but this is certainly a record of the magnetic states of its structure. Because magnetite is present on the planet, biology had the opportunity to merge with magnetite, which is an important part of the puzzle that allows us to understand how complex biological consciousness came into existence. It has been proposed that magnetite crystal is used within the brain in order to record memory. We've discovered certain microorganisms that contain a strip of magnetite, and we think that that's what they use in order to align themselves and find the silt where their food sources reside. Basically, they use it as a sense of direction. That would be the most primitive form of awareness, given the little area bubble is really small. The interactions between carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, as well as more complex chemicals that help to form amino and proteins, yield primitive biology in the form of bacteria or algae. In a dance of emergence, some of them become entwined with magnetite. This was likely the start of complex biological memory. Area awareness is born, very limited be that as it may. I postulate, over millions of years, colonies of microorganisms started to work together and their combined state yielded other possibilities. Again, more emergence. This 
is not a video about evolution, so I'm not going to go into great detail in regards to the other steps that yielded what we call animals. So skipping ahead a bit, rolling the dice over and over again for a very long period of time, eventually we will likely yield a large percentage of the combinations that could occur from that trillion-sided dice that represents the emergent chaotic state of existence. We end up with complex microbiological symbiotic masses of awareness that we refer to as animal life. A few side notes. We invented tape recording before we knew that magnetite was inside the brain. Tape recording uses strips of magnetite that are either positively or negatively aligned in order to represent a one or a zero. Later on, a scientist discovered the strip of magnetite in microorganisms and decided to cut open a sheep's brain in order to look for magnetite. Not sure why he made that leap, but I'm glad that he did. Then he decided, once he found it in the sheep's brain, that he would check the human brain, and indeed found it there also. Another interesting side note is magnetite in the beaks of homing pigeons is proposed to help in their sense of direction. Domestic hens have iron mineral deposits in the dendrites in the upper beak and are capable of magnetoreception. Worms use magnetoreception to orientate and travel downwards when they're hungry and up when they are satiated. Magnetoreception is well documented in honeybees, ants, and termites also. And we've already briefly covered magnetotactic bacteria. These side notes are of interest because I'm proposing these are the precursors of our complex memory after millions of years of adaptations. So, to recap, memory is the product of emergent properties in our universe, and biological memory and or consciousness does not exist without the formation of heavy elements and chemicals. Fascinating shit, I know. We can thank our lucky stars that we can experience the wondrous complexities of our universe in all of its magnificent glory. Thanks so much for making an effort to expand our understandings and gifting this community with your presence. Please remember to subscribe, thumb up, and share. Next up, Tier 1, Genetic Memory, manifested as a product of environmental stimuli, epigenetics. Alright, see you in the next video.